like I'm looking for leans, leaps, and lights. Make sure my overhead lights are properly mounted and secured. They're orange in color. They're facing this way. Orange in the front, red to the rear. The three middle lights are ID lights. The outside ones are clearance lights. Let's move over, over to the headlight. The headlight assembly has a high beam and a low beam light. It has a turn signal and a four-way flasher and a reflector right here on the side. We're going to go under the hood. Be careful when you open the hood. We're going to move our way back to the end of the exhaust. So we're going to start here at the exhaust manifold, follow the, the exhaust pipe all the way back under the cab, under here, to where it comes out down here into the muffler. We're checking the muffler and all the exhaust pipes for leaks. Like if you see soot like right here, that means the exhaust is leaking. And you would check the muffler for the same thing and there should be soot coming out the end because that's where it's supposed to come out. On our way back, we're going to see ourselves a uh, fuel tank. That fuel tank should be mounted to the side of the vehicle with these straps, with these rubber vibration dampeners. It should have a, a cap that's hand tight. The cap on the inside should have a rubber seal. The tank and the cap should not be leaking. Moving way up here. Our alternator should be properly mounted with these four bolts here to the side of the engine. This alternator is belt driven. So we're checking the belt for tension. Should be no less than three quarters of an inch of uh, tension on that belt. The wires on this on this alternator to make sure they're properly affixed to the alternator, that they're not loose and sparking out. On the front here, the, on the front of this Caterpillar engine, we have a water pump. It is also belt driven. We're going to check that belt the same way we check the alternator belt for the same exact things: cuts, frays, tears, abrasions, shiny spots on the belt. The unique side we have our coolant tank it should be between minimum and maximum. So this one's between full and low, right? We're going to start from the top, work our way down to the bottom. So from the top to the bottom, this is an automatic transmission. We're not going to worry about that right now. We'll move down to our oil dipstick. We'll pull it out, wipe it off, put it back in, pull it back out. And it should read between minimum and maximum. We're adding full. Moving down on the back side of this air compressor is a power steering pump way down in that hole. It is gear driven. It is driven off the back side of this air compressor, which is also gear driven. The air compressor is affixed uh, is affixed to the engine block with bolts up front here and it is not leaking you see no signs of leaks around the hoses I see no cracks in the housing you can identify this as an air compressor because it has this big square head fat round belly down there like Uncle Bob moving our way out following the hoses to our steering system we're going to go ahead and knock out the steering system. Here's our steering gear shaft. Here's our steering gear box. Here's our pitman arm, our drag link, our upper and our lower control arm, and our tie rod back there. So our steering gear box is properly affixed to the frame with these bolts here and on the other side here. There's no cracks in the housing. It's not leaking. Pitman arm, drag link, upper and lower control arm, tie rod are held together with you um, with uh, ball joints that have a castle nut and a cotter key these are all greased properly none of these parts in the steering linkage are bent twisted cracked or broken so now we're going to move our way to the suspension system our suspension system has a spring hanger in the front right look on spring hanger so we're going to look at our spring hanger, make sure it's affixed to the, the frame with the bolts, make sure it's not cracked, bent. Both of them are properly aligned, none of them are cracked, none of them are missing. Moving our way back to our shock absorber. Our shock absorber is mounted at the top and the bottom. The rubber bushings are not dry rotted, cracked, or torn. The shock is not leaking. It is mounted to this saddle here that is holding the U-bolts in in place the u-bolts are holding these springs to the axle the u-bolts have four nuts on the bottom of the u-bolts 
All of them are present. None of these U-bolts are stretched, cracked, or bent. Moving our way up to our air line that goes to our brake chamber. Our air line has no dry rot, leaks, and it's properly affixed with pressure fittings over here and over here to the air chamber. The brake chamber has a clamp or a pressure fitting. We like to call it a clamp. Um, none of these items are cracked, bent, or missing. There are no signs of leaks. Your brake chamber is affixed to this housing, this, uh, I don't know, mount? Yeah, sure, we'll call it a mount. With these bolts here and here, the, the push rod comes out of the brake chamber and hooks up with a clevis pin and a cotter key to this slack adjuster. There should be no more than one inch of play when you pull on this thing. You should see no more than one inch of play on this. Okay, the slack adjuster is affixed with a pop ring to the S-cam uh, rod. Okay, the slack adjuster and push rod is held together with a clevis pin and a cotter key. Moving our way in to where the brake drum and the brake liner is, or the brake pad. The brake drum should have should be free of oil, grease, debris. Should not be heated up, so there's no bluing. Um, there's no cracks on it. Uh, there's no debris in there, no grease, oil, or debris. Neither with the brake pads, the brake liners, there's no grease, oil, debris on those. They're not cracked. They're properly mounted with springs and fittings inside the brake drum. On our way out, we're going to look at the tire. Both sides of this tire, there are no dry rot holes, bubbles, cuts, or anything like that. We're going to look at the tread. The tread depth in the front should be no less than 4 seconds of an inch. This happens to be real big and meaty, so we're not having a problem there. It's not unevenly worn. There are no gouges on the side, no scalloping. There's no edge wear, so the alignment is likely really good. Moving our way out and down, we have our rim. Our rim has no illegal holes, no welds. Uh, no illegal repairs, it's not cracked. All of our lug nuts, every single lug nut that is supposed to be here is present. They're all tight. You could tell because if they were loose, they would have rust trails leaking out. And if they were over tight, then the rim would be cracked. Moving our way down and over here, we see our metal valve stem with a, it's supposed to be a metal valve cap. Well, we don't happen to have one right now, but there will be one eventually. You would use that to check the, the tire pressure in this tire. Okay, so check that with a tire pressure gauge, a truck tire pressure gauge. An automotive one won't work. It'll actually probably destroy the, the pressure gauge. So from there, we're gonna go to our hub. This is an oil bath hub for the bearings on the inside of this hub. You would pop this cork out, put your finger in there like I demonstrated earlier, pull it out, it should be no, no less than one knuckle deep. That's if you can't see through a little sight glass. This one does not have a sight glass. And that finishes up the front of the truck. We're gonna to move to our back of our truck, which consists of our door. We're gonna check our door, make sure it is fixed to the truck. All the hinges are not worn out, cracked, or broken. The seal on our door, there are no signs of dry rot or cuts that would allow rain or exhaust to leak into the cab. Our window rolls up and down properly. The windows are in place. The seal on this edge of the door also is in the same condition as the one on the outer side of the door. We're going to make sure this thing closes and stays closed. Now we're going to check our mirror. Our mirror is affixed here with screws and there with screws and here with bolts and there with bolts. That's our mirror bracket. It's not bent, cut, torn, bent, cut, or broken. Uh, there's no twists in the metal. These mirrors are attached here and here with these screws on these brackets. The brackets are not broke. The mirrors themselves are clean and clear. They appear to be adjusted from this side. We'll check later inside the truck when we do the end cap. Moving our way down, we have our steps and they are properly affixed to the side of the frame with a bracket and these screws. There's no oil, grease, or debris that would cause us to slip or fall. 
Now moving our way back, I'm teaching these guys, it, this is a little bit much, but we're going to check our battery box. Make sure it has a cover, make sure that it's not leaking, you don't want any leaking batteries, and that it's not venting hydrogen sulfide gases. We're going to move our way back and we're going to look at our frame of our truck again. We're going to make sure there are no holes, illegal welds, none of that, none of the cross members are missing and everything is bolted to the frame properly. Moving underneath the vehicle, we have a drive shaft. This is part of our drive line. There is one, two on this truck. Since we don't have a second axle in the back, there won't be a jack shaft between them. So we're looking at our U-joints. There's no debris caught up in the U-joints. The drive shafts are not twisted. They're not cracked. Um, there's no bends in them. Moving our way back, we have a spring ride suspension in the back as well. We have a front spring hanger. We have our springs. We have what's called a, a uh, torque arm, uh, torque bar rather. Arms are adjustable, bars are not. This one is a torque bar on this side and on that side. So moving our way back inside here, we have two U-bolts on this axle and we're gonna check those U-bolts the same way we check the other ones up front. We're gonna make sure they're not stretched, uh, cracked, make sure all four nuts are on the bottom of the U-bolts. Then we're going to move our way back to the brake chamber back there. Our brake chamber right here has a, a clamp that holds the spring brake in place and another clamp that holds the other half of the brake chamber in place. So we're going to check these hoses coming into the brake chamber for a dry rod, holes, leaks, make sure they're properly affixed to the brake chamber and to the hoses distribution valve up there. We're going to follow our brake chamber back. On the back side of this is a slack adjuster and a push rod. We're going to check it in relatively the same manner that we checked the one in the front except that there's no way we're pulling on that thing to get a reading off of it unless the brakes are released. That heavy spring on the inside will keep it from moving. That's its job. On our, on our way in we're going to notice that the slack adjuster and push rod is affixed with a clevis pin and a cotter key and also that the slack adjuster is held on to the SKM rod with a pop ring that keeps all that in place so it doesn't fall off moving our way in from the from the slack adjuster we'll see the brake drum and the brake liner back there it has a dust cover so like the front one has a dust cover this back one does too we really can't see in there but how I would see in there is I would get a little inspection mirror and I'd shine a little bit of light in there with a flashlight and look into that inspection mirror and see whether or not you have more than uh, more than enough uh, brake pad in there. It should be more than a quarter of an inch. Am I right? Well, quarter of an inch. I was right. Yay! Okay. Um, there should be free of oil, grease, debris, no cracks in the quarter of an inch or better brake pad. And... Uh, there shouldn't be any cracks in the, the brake drum, just like the front one. All right, moving our way back. Actually, let's move our way out from there. We're gonna check our tires. These are bud space tires, so you don't want any debris, you no know, like rocks, um, tennis balls, anything like that in between the duel, duels here. Both rims should be touching each other. There should be no space between the rims. We're checking both tires, the sidewalls of both tires, to make sure there's no abrasions, bulges, cuts, dry rot, that sort of stuff. We're going to check the tread. On the back, there should be more than two thirty seconds of an inch of tread. The tread should be evenly worn. If we move down here, it's beaded to the rim securely. It does not appear to be leaking. Move to our rim. Our rim should not be have any illegal repairs, no cracks, no stuff like that um, signs of rotting through we're going to look at our lug nuts all of our lug nuts are present and tight uh, there's no signs of cracks on on the rim which would mean somebody over tightened the lug nuts or or cracked lug nuts because those crack too um, also there's no uh, signs of rust trails which would mean they were loose moving our way out this is an axle seal we're just checking for leaks to make sure that this is bolted tight. 
Um, so that's pretty much all there is for that. Just check for leaks on this thing. And if there's any cracks, then it obviously be leaking. Moving down here, this is a metal valve stem with supposed to be a metal cap. We would use that to check the pressure of the tires. We use a truck tire pressure gauge like we did in the front on this one here as well. We'll move our way back here. It's our mud flap. Should be affixed to the vehicle securely. Should not be less than 80% of the mud flap there. It needs to be able to stop debris and rain and things like that from hitting the vehicles behind you. Also moving our way back, we have these lights here. This is just a marker light down the bottom. The top one here, this is also a marker light, but since it's up here, we could consider that a clearance light. Although it doesn't really clear much because it's a very short truck. On the back of this lift, uh, back of this gate, we have DOT tape, okay? Also known as conspicuosity tape or conspicuity tape. I get those two confused, but it's pretty conspicuous. Anyway, that needs to be adhered to the back of this vehicle 100%. We move our way down. Now we have a four function light. This is a tail light, a brake light, a turn signal, and a four way flasher. Four functions. It's actually five functions because right in the middle here, right there, that's where, you, where your reverse light is. These are red in color. Red to the rear, amber to the front. Really all we have to be concerned with were the Class B.